So if y'all look at this herd, I got animals about this size right here, this size right here. And if you look at them from across the top, you can tell. So I got about animals about that size right there. One, two, three, the, you know, all these. And then I got animals about this size right here. This, this one right here, that one right there, this one right there, that one right there, that one right there. And so these right here, animals this size, I believe they will be ready for market here in about, oh, uh, maybe about two months. And the animals this size will be ready for market here in about three months. And uh, tomorrow I will be bringing in more cattle. I'm, I'm bringing in more cattle tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna get things going. I got an early spring. I got a lot of grass on my field. I can actually see my grass growing vertically from here. Like uh, if I look out at my field, the grass is actually so tall and so thick that I can actually see it off of the ground. And so that's very good. That's a that's a very good a visual indicator to me that my feet my that my uh, my my uh, my field has a lot of biomass. And uh. These animals are, are obviously eating a lot. Sometimes they'll come in very bloated and that's why I also got them on this specific feed. Oh. Oh. Yesterday I was uh, talking about the uh, the Mongolian people, right? And I think that this is one of the, uh, one of, you know, a very realistic way. You know, why is it, that I personally believe if we look in the past right why do I believe that it is such a uh, and I understand that this is a multi-dimensional situation right I understand that there is a lot more that goes on into it than what I understand but if we look at like in history right if we look at the Mongolian people you know uh, uh, back in the day uh, you know in the Mongolians uh, you know uh, were, were doing their thing uh, you know, about uh, 800 years ago, 700 years ago, uh, you know, uh, China was a uh, was not China, right? It was a collection of many dynasties. It was like I believe it was the Jin Dynasty, the Song Dynasty. There were uh, there were many dynasties, right? And Mongolia was the same way. There were uh, the Mongolia was a fractured state as well, and I believe that it was the Jin Dynasty that was paying, uh, that was uh, giving money to the mongolian states uh the the various mongolian states i'm not sure exactly which one but they were giving money to them so that they would fight each other instead of instead of attacking china instead of attacking instead of attacking uh the, i guess it, at that point i believe it was uh, the jin dynasty they were giving money to the uh, the various mongolian states so that the mongolian states would fight each other instead of instead of attacking the jin right and what did that create that created a, 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 a that created Temujin, right? Genghis Khan. It created a man who was a, who had a, a you know a, a a deep, deep, deep hatred for the the uh, the uh, the Jin Dynasty. I believe it was the Jin Dynasty, right? And at the end of the day, but I mean, uh, even uh, when uh, from my understanding, when Genghis Khan first invaded the Jin Dynasty. That was kind of uh, the, uh, well, I mean, I guess his first step was that he unified the Mongolian front. He, he collected uh, the, uh, he, he was able to uh, unify the Mongolian people. And once he, once he unified the Mongolian people, he then invaded the Jin dynasty. From my understanding, that is how it occurred. And when he first invaded the Jin dynasty, he did not uh, burn the city to the ground. He, he eventually, uh, I, I, for what, um, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but he went there, uh, I'm not exactly sure, uh, like, uh, if there was, like, a, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, I, like, uh, I know that, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure, if, like, there was a, uh, if there was, like, a, uh, a disease that spread through his army while he was, uh, while he was, uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but, um, for whatever reason, he did not burn the Jin Dynasty to the ground, at, 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 on the first invasion, he did not burn the Jin Dynasty to the ground, right? And then as he was leaving the Jin Dynasty, they pulled their uh, their troops off of the Great Wall to, to fortify the city. And when they did that, Genghis Khan then saw it as an act of war and came back and burned the city to the ground. And after he burned the city to the ground and looted it, he then looked to set up a uh, um, he then looked to set up trade with the neighboring nations. And when he looked to set up trade with the neighboring nations, they then killed his uh, trade envoy twice. 
they killed his uh his uh his trade uh he, they killed his trade envoy twice and at that point he then went and uh and uh did what he did but that is a very uh honest uh, very realistic way of looking at what happens when 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 uh when a nation uh you know fuels foreign wars right the Jin dynasty was fueling the Mongolian wars. They were giving, uh, they were giving, uh, you know, resources to the various. Uh, I don't know if it was to the various Mongolian states or if it was to just one Mongolian state. I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, you know, everybody's gonna know everything, no matter what. That's what I say, right? People are gonna know. People are not dumb, deaf, and blind, right? Like if we are sending resources to one, you know, or, or to the various, or wherever it may be. We may actually end up creating a people who have a hatred for the American way simply because we fueled their wars. Honestly, that that may happen, right? It's not going to be like they hate America because America, you know, America has this and that and this going forward. And they don't hate America because of the American way. They hate America simply because we fueled their wars. They remember, oh, three generations ago, my grand, my, my grand, grand, grandfather was killed by uh, by a uh, you know uh, America was uh, fueling the wars and my grandfather was killed my grand 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 grandfather was killed in that war and you know uh, now I got a cousin who also died in the war and you know we were fueling you know there there the, these wars were being fueled by the American uh, by the American people for whatever reason it does not have to be direct funding either it does not you know it, it's not like we just gave them whatever it may be if we are even indirectly fueling foreign wars. It could create a people who have a burning hatred for the American way simply because of that. Not because they hate America for what it is, but just simply because of that, right? And that is a very realistic, and, and I'm like, you know, uh, I remember, uh, uh, you know, uh, yesterday, you know, I wasn't uh, really thinking about this. And so, I, you know, it wasn't on the top of my head, but from what I from what I remember from my understanding you know the one of the big 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 reasons for why Genghis Khan first invaded the Jin dynasty I believe it was the Jin dynasty and I believe that the Jin dynasty had a uh, had a uh, history of having a very bad uh, you know uh, 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 you know doing a I don't know exactly what happened uh, you know probably be better to, to look it up for yourself but you know uh, the the uh, from my understanding, Temujin at that time he was just he was not Genghis Khan. Um, uh, even from when he was a young boy, you know, uh, he had a, a burning hatred for for the uh, for for the people uh, for the uh, the Jin Dynasty simply because I believe it was the Jin Dynasty, but because it was because they were uh, fueling uh, the Mongolian wars, right? They were they were fueling wars between the fractured Mongolian state. You know, there there were various tribes in the Mongolian people, and the uh, I believe it was the Jin Dynasty, or it could have been a collection of all of the uh, all of the the various uh, dynasties in that area at that time were fueling the wars, so that the Mongolian people would kill each other instead of invading, instead of invading the uh, the the various dynasties, and you know, and that created a hatred for uh, for the you know for the. Uh, that 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 those particular dynasties right it created a hatred in the people in the mongolian uh well particularly temujin genghis khan and that was um, one of the big reasons why he invaded uh, you know and, and burned and first time he invaded the the uh, the uh the the state the dynasty he did not burn it to the ground and they they pulled their troops off of the great wall and fortified the city and when they did that he then saw it as an act of war and so then he he turned around and pillaged everything and burnt everything to the ground and once he did that and he had a lot of stuff he looked to set up trade with the neighbor and and then it was just a big domino effect right and then it was like oh well uh, you know if if their leader their their khan from you know from the the Mongolian people their leaders were their khans and so it was like, oh, you know, uh, to them, when he saw their uh, the, his trade emissaries get killed, he, he, he saw it as their con has now killed my trade emissary, right? Has killed my trade emissary twice. Well, it is now my responsibility to obliterate this con's people, right? It is now my responsibility to do so. That, that is what I know, right? And so that that is ultimately what caused the giant domino effect, right? And then it just ended up with with massive amounts of people getting killed massive amounts of people getting killed all over the place right babies i mean everybody right and so you know that is what i believe is you know and i understand that it is a multi-dimensional situation and that it is not as simple as 
a man who was standing in his backyard running cattle would understand, right? I do not understand the intricacies and, 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 and the thoroughness of, of everything going on. You know, it's probably beyond me, right? Like me, I'm just a farmer, right? I'm just standing here running cattle in my backyard. I'm, I'm sure that there is a lot more that goes on into it, but that is a very realistic look at what happens when a nation fuels another, na uh, you know, fuels wars beyond its borders. But tomorrow I'll be bringing in new cattle. You know, I average a profit of about a uh, six hundred, uh, five to seven hundred dollars of net profit, depending on where the cattle market is. You know, I bought these animals. I bought these animals. I believe with the feeder cattle market was uh, somewhere around a two forty when I bought these feeder cattle market. Or when I with the feeder cattle market was somewhere around two forty when I bought these animals. Uh, 240 250 and that's where the feeder cattle market is right now it took a dip over the last few months so uh, maybe the last three months it dropped all the way to 210 but now it's back up to 240 and so you know i would say uh, a uh, when 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 the market goes sideways if the market goes sideways i probably make about a five five if, if i'm if i do very good uh, you know because it also depends on what weight do the end uh, what a weight animal do i bring in right like if i bring in a 150 pound calf i'm gonna probably I, I will i will end up making more net profit on that 150 dollar calf than i would like a 350 pound calf but if i bring in a 350 pound calf there is a lot less uh burden on my shoulders in taking care of that animal because you know it's like i said always you know i've said this repeatedly but the larger the animal is the less problems the less severe its problems become right and so you know you know, it, re it really depends, and that's why I'm saying it's a it's it's a range from five to seven hundred dollars of net profit an animal, and so usually if I sell eight animals a month, I will make myself something around four or five thousand dollars of net profit. And uh, you know, uh, this uh, this weekend I'll be bringing in more tomorrow. I'll be bringing in more animals, and uh, I need to get my herd numbers up. My grass is doing very good. I do not anticipate that my grass will die again from cold weather. I do not think it's going to get cold enough for my grass to die. <coughs> I do not believe that it's going to get cold enough for my grass to die. But uh, if it does happen, right, I always got my emergency plan. You know, I always got my, if everything, if everything goes to, you know, to a, you know, if everything goes horribly, I have my emergency plan, right? I have enough feed put away in in, uh, in dry storage, enough total mixed ration feed in dry storage to put like 70 animals on, on a total mixed ration for probably close to three, four months. And, but you know, that that's like being afraid of the monster under the bed. Like, is my grass ever just gonna completely disappear, right? Probably not. I mean, let's just be honest. There isn't any reason for me to be afraid of the monster under the bed. The monster under the bed does not exist, right? But just in case, as a backup, 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 emergency, emergency, emergency plan, I have commodities put away in dry storage that I, that when I purchased them, you know, I ran the numbers and made sure that they would be profitable for me. You know, uh, okay, so the, the commodities that I feed, okay, even like hay, right? Like even like this hay, if I put round bales, if I put round bales in feeder in feeder rings, if I put round bales in hay rings, there's going to be about a 25 to 30 percent discard of material. So about 25 to 30 percent of the uh, the roughage material will be thrown on the ground by the animal as they eat it, or they will just simply just walk on it and sleep on it, and they will not eat it. And that's a very good example. Look at the ground back there, right? There's corn stock all over the place. And so, uh, if I put it inside of these feed bins for them, they will, they will, uh, the, the amount of waste that is produced is uh, very, very, very minimal. And so, when looking at commodity prices, you also got to look at how am I going to feed it to the animal, right? Like, am I going to feed it to them in a way that they can't throw it on the ground? And so, you know, and, and, uh, it's like, how much am I paying for per unit of, uh, of protein? How much am I paying per unit of energy? You got to have a rough idea of these estimates. If you, um, I would highly suggest, and, and what I mean by I would highly suggest is that this is what I do. This is, this is just how I do it. 
and it, uh, you know if you do it some other way okay so here's the thing about learning how to do something it does not matter what it is you could be learning to become a wrestler a boxer a farmer whatever you want to be a football player a soccer player whatever you want to be right you could be learning how to do this stuff but always learn the basics first right you did not fall out of heaven to seven. You do not have some magical, mystical style that's just going to change the world forever. You do not have that, okay? I do not have that. You do not have that. Like, when you look at what I got going on, this is all, this is not, you know, 99.99999% of this is not my idea. This is the idea of other people that I implemented on my farm. And so always learn the basics and, and get very good at the basics. And, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe long, 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 long down the line, you will develop your own style, right? The one thing that maybe I do on my own that is kind of different, you know, but, but granted that I've been doing this for a very long time, right, is, is the, uh, is the uh, you know, the collection of the, of the saturation data of the minerals in my soul. And this is also, uh, I also got to talk about that because, uh, you know, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been looking at my field and anticipating what do I need to do over my field because over the next two weeks, I'm not supposed to be getting any rain and it's supposed to be somewhere around 75 in the afternoon and about 50 in the, in the, uh, in the evening. And so I got to figure out what I'm going to do on my field. I got an opportunity here to do something on my field if I felt like it. And, uh, you know, uh, it's always, uh, it's always a very good idea to get very, 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 very thoroughly knowledgeable of the basics, whatever it may be, just learn the basics, right? Learn the basics, get very good at the basics, and, and very, 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 very far down the line, you, you maybe have an opportunity to develop your own style, right? And uh, when I look at my grass, uh, when I look at my grass, you know, okay, so if you've ever grown plants, like, under the shade, right? Like, let's say you, uh, whatever it may be, it may be under a shade cloth in a greenhouse. If you've ever, it may be under a tree. If you've ever grown plants in the shade or maybe on a windowsill and maybe whatever right if you've ever grown plants in the shade even if it's for just two weeks the plant will be metabolizing uh at a rate you know uh, plants they do not just grow right that they are not just on this uh you know uh, they do not just grow in a linear fashion depending on their environment depending like uh, on the the level of minerals in their soil depending on the amount of light going through their leaf material depending on how much carbon dioxide is being put you know uh, pushed into the plant uh, you know by the atmosphere depending on all these things right the plant will the, the the growth of the plant will vary it will be different and so like you know over the last two weeks it was very wet right it was very wet and it was also very dark outside there was a lot of cloud cover there wasn't much sunlight and so for two weeks the plants were were uh, subject to these environmental conditions and over the next two weeks it is going to get very bright and very warm it's going to get 75 degrees full sunshine for about two weeks straight and so if you've ever grown a plant inside or where under shade or anything and then you've left it outside you just took the plant outside and put it outside directly under the sunlight the plant could even die the plant could die uh, the plant could uh the plant needs to recreate its photosynthetic machinery the, the plant needs to recreate its plant material in a way that is now optimized for its new environment and so when I look at my field right now, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I said all this dead plant material will give me a fertilizer credit and I need to anticipate that. And plant material on a, a very generic basis, I am not taking, a, you know, samples of plant tissue. Like I'm not doing stuff like that, right? Like I always say, don't do the OCD stuff, right? Like don't do the super, super, super OCD stuff. Don't, don't even worry about that stuff. Like I'm not gonna look at my animals right now and go, oh my God, you know, uh, their manure, uh, their manure score is at a four. And if I reduce their, the corn stock uh, consumption by 10%, I can, uh, you know, or their manure score is at a six. And if I reduce their corn stock, uh, you know, if I start weighing their corn stocks and reduce their corn stock intake by 10%, I can, I can uh, reduce their manure score from six to five. Don't worry about that stuff, right? Don't worry about the OCD stuff, right? Don't don't worry about you know use large strokes right use um you know d uh, just uh, you know uh, do big picture stuff that's what I always say do big picture stuff don't worry about the small 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 finite details right you know if I put these animals on a corn stock ration that I mix with a 14% Bovatec cream pellet and I feed them a uh, a middle to late vegetative grass. Uh, the w a winter wheat middle to late vegetative grass that has been fertilized at, at roughly optimal you know s somewhat of a saturated you know uh, 
depending depending on what I'm going to grow the grass for, like if I'm going to grow the grass for hay, you know, I'm going to need more, um, you know, I can uh, I can uh, have a, a saturation of minerals in, in the plant material would be different if I was growing the grass for hay than if I was growing the grass as to be a forage for animals, right? I've said this repeatedly in the past, but if I grow the grass like I'm growing hay and then I put the animals on it, chances are they're going to they're going to die. Like they're going to die because the grass is too good, right? even at this even at this point the, the animals are, are bloating you know i i sometimes like if i do not if i do not uh you know maintain their diet properly i could end up with 20 to 25 percent of my animals severely bloating by the end of the night and so you know that's why i also feed the roughage material i give them a uh, an energy supplement with the roughage material and i also just give them a uh, a 14 percent acidosis medication creep pellet right and i do that stuff so that it, when they eat the grass, the grass is probably going to be too high in protein, and the uh, the energy levels may be just right, and uh, you know, uh, and the uh, acidosis medication will help with their with their uh, with their digestive system. And if any of this stuff, you know, it's like I always say, if any of this stuff is confusing you, is it probably will be right? It will probably be, be confusing, and it will probably be like it's moving too fast, right? But you got to understand that this is what I do, like literally 24 hours a day. And this is what I've been doing for 15 years, right? So the things that I talk about, I'm probably not going to talk about things that like, you know, someone, you know, you know, they, they've got five years or whatever it may be, right? You know, and, you know, or, you know, what, whatever it may be, you got to really look at the person. You know, some people, you know, it's not, you know, you know, it's, uh, you just got to take a real good look at the person. And if you talk to somebody for 30 seconds, you will know who is, who is 100% balls to the wall committed. You will know. And, and who is putting in the most time and who is putting in the most effort in anything, in anything, it becomes very, very, very easily recognizable, right? I mean, and so, you know, uh, you know, if you don't, you know, like if it seems like it's moving too fast or if it seems like you don't understand, you probably don't. And it probably is moving fast, but just write it down and look it up for yourself. Write it down and just look it up for yourself. All of this stuff is in, is practically information that I collected on the Internet for free by myself. Most of this stuff is. Almost all of this stuff is stuff that I collected on the Internet by myself, just looking it up on a computer legitimately. And so, you know, just write it down and look it up for yourself. If you don't believe me, look it up for yourself. You know, chances are you did not fall out of heaven a seven and you, you do not have some mystical, mythical style that's just going to change the world. If you start, it, you probably don't. OK, let's just be honest. And so, you know, just look it up. And uh, th that's how I learned. And if I could do it, you could do it, too. And I spent a lot of time and a lot of effort doing this. And so these animals, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, if, if the market goes sideways, if the market goes sideways, I'll probably make about five to five hundred dollars. If the market goes anywhere good, anywhere in, in a positive direction, I'll probably, I could do even seven hundred. But if, if the market does not do good and, you know, it's like, a, it, it, OK, here's the thing about the market not doing good. Right. Because me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stalker calf. Uh, I'm a stalker and a backgrounder. Right. That, that's what I do. If the if the market goes down, I'll sell the animals for less, but I'll also buy the animals for less. Right. And so it's not a big deal. And, and you know, cattle, it's not just a uh, it's not just a, a one dimensional thing. It's not just the cattle. Right. I also need to consider my income tax benefits. I also need to consider the, you know, the overall commodities markets. How much am I paying for fertilizer? How much am I paying for corn? How much am I paying for hay? I got to think about all that stuff. And so to think that, oh, well, you know, I would just, I, to, to, be, um, to, to be as just uh, simple as possible, I would just anticipate that I make about $500. And, you know, if, I really, if I'm really concerned about the cattle market, I could even go and just buy smaller animals, right? If I'm if I'm very concerned about the, about the, the cattle market, I can just go in and just buy smaller animals, right? I can start with smaller animals, and so there are. I would just say to, to just put the overall business idea into perspective. Ninety nine percent of the time, probably I'm gonna make somewhere around five hundred dollars an animal, and so if I sell a you know maybe a little bit more, but five hundred dollars would be just the uh, the conservative estimate, right? And so if I sell eight animals a month, I make about I make about 50,000 a year net profit. And, uh, you know, if anything leans into my favor at all, if anything at all leans into my favor, I get good weather. Uh, commodity markets drop a little bit. Uh, you know, the cattle market goes up a little bit. My my profits go up higher, you know, uh, maybe up to about 60,000. 
And so, you know, on a very, 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 very conservative estimate, I make I make uh, fifty thousand a year, forty eight thousand a year, very conservative, and that is just cash. That is just the amount of net cash flow that I am producing. And then I also got my income tax benefits, right? And then I also got my property tax benefits. And so, and then I also got my sales tax benefits. I don't need to pay sales tax on anything that I purchase for my farm. And so all that stuff adds up too, right? And so, uh, you know, if things just go okay, if things just go like flat and to the right, just, just if things just go okay, I'll make about $500 an animal, probably a little bit more. You know, because it's not just the cattle market, right? If the cattle market goes flat and to the right, but there's very good weather, commodity prices drop. You know, now I can purchase my, my feedstuffs for a lower price. That is also making me money, right? And so it's not just the cattle market. And, and it's also, you know, like if we really want to get into the nitty gritty of stuff, I'm also collecting equity on my property, right? And, my, and, if, and if my property is appreciating, then I'm also collecting money on that. And so, you know, this farm makes me a drastic sum of money. Let, let's, you know, even this 10 acres right here, it, it puts me in a situation where I am netting a drastic. Well, I mean, for some, it may not be a lot, but let's just be honest for the average person, like $80,000 a year is a lot of money, right? Even for me, I'm just going to be honest you know, God put things in perspective, like 70, $80,000 a year is, is, is a lot of money. Let's just be honest, right? For most people, like 99.999% of America, 70, $80,000 a year is a lot of money. And so, you know, and so, I mean, it just is what it is, right? I'm not like one of these people like uh, on a private jet, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on some yacht, right? I mean, I legitimately just run cattle in my backyard. And so $80,000 a year is a lot of money for me. $70,000 a year is a lot of money for me. You know, you know, you know, when I make like 140, $150,000 a year, that to me is practically unlimited money. Like if I just sit here on my backyard and run cattle and I push myself balls to the wall and let's say, uh, you know, I just say this is my, my forever dream and I run cattle on my 10 acres, right? I run cattle on my 10 acres and I push myself balls to the wall and I make myself an extra two, three thousand $3,000 a month of net profit. And let's say I make 150 or two, 150 to $200,000 a year. That is practically unlimited money for me, right? I mean, let's just be honest, 150, $200,000 a year of net money, net profit. That is how much money is at the end, in my bank account at the end of the day after I paid for everything, right? My income taxes, everything. $150,000, $200,000 a year going into my bank account. That is almost unlimited money, right? For the average person, for 99.999% of America, that is almost unlimited money. And I'm not just saying this because, you know, it's like, I'm just going to be honest. It is practically unlimited money. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.